The basic tools you'll need to become an estate agent are as follows. You'll need a diary, which is also your calendar, which will set you up for your appointments throughout the day, week, month ahead. You will require a reliable website. So whether it's your own personal website or you're working for a broker and you're utilizing their website, it needs to be reliable. It needs to be modern and very easy to maneuver through. You will require a telephone. So ideally, um, it's gonna be a mobile phone. If you're in the office, then obviously there's a phone in the office, but you still need to be contactable directly by any of your clients or clients-to-be. Uh, you'll need a business card. Your business card is your identity, and your business card represents who you are and what company you're working for, and you'll distribute your business card very, very frequently to have plenty of cards. Uh, you'll require a CRM system, which is what you will utilize for marketing your properties, for registering applicants, for broadcasting your properties onto the other property portals. You will also need to add listings and you'll have the ability to manage your rental properties through the CRM system, which will involve making payments to landlords, issuing invoices and statements, chasing up rent arrears, etc. Uh, you'll also need to be up to scratch with all the legal documents. So for example, your terms of business, which is what your customer will look through and sign once they're comfortable giving you their property. You'll also have access to tenancy agreements. Tenancy agreements will be used once you've rented a property. Uh, you'll have forms for referencing, forms for taking a reservation deposit. Um, you'll have your management agreements on there for rentals. When you first start out as an agent, you'll need a marketing kit. So you'll need flyers, leaflets, something that advertises what you do, quite specifically what you do. So for example, you may be offering sales, you may be offering lettings. You're potentially gonna be looking to gain instructions on properties. You need to let the local area know who you are and what you offer specifically. So to start with, you've got to choose where you're going to fit in with regards to your position. Are you going to be self-employed? Will you be employed? Or perhaps you're more comfortable being a broker associate. If you're self-employed, there are costs involved for memberships to property redress schemes and memberships for other positions within the company. You'll be earning very high commissions because your boss or your company that you're working for has no overheads for you. You're paying all your own marketing, advertising, etc. Can be quite lonely. You've got to be a very highly self-motivated individual because you'll be working on your own for most of the time. You're probably not going to be based in the office, so you're going to be out in the field nine times out of ten. You've got to be comfortable with your ability to win the business, to deal with people directly. You're not really going to have the backup of a team around you. Second option is to take an employed position. Now, if you're employed, the best thing about that, I suppose, is that you've got a base salary to fall back on every month. If you have a good month or a bad month, you've still got that base, which is going to be paid to you. It's a good way of starting your journey as an estate agent, because I think you're going to gain knowledge from your boss and the team that works within the office. Um, you've got the option to switch over to become a broker associate once you're comfortable with your ability. Um, you're gonna be targeted when you're employed, so you've got to meet targets specific. You've got to provide results that your boss sets out for you to achieve. If you then got the comfortable position of switching over to become a broker associate, you're gonna be based in the office but you're then gonna be out in the field working for yourself, more of a self-employed role. You've still got the knowledge and the expertise and the experience of the team in the office and for your broker. Um, although you, this, this really fits in for locally based people, locally based individuals that maybe want to work part-time. You can work full-time as well, of course, but it could be for maybe a stay-at-home parent, for example, um, who's got 20 hours, 30 hours a week. 
that really has a really good network of people around them, friends and family, very, very likely you're gonna have people that are gonna be providing business to you on a regular basis. Um, so that's the three options. Which one's gonna suit you? Legal responsibilities. You're required to be a member of a property scheme. So for example, the property redress scheme gives the customer the ability to have a resolution with any complaint that they may bring to either you or your employer or your broker of record. Um, if they're not happy with the original response from you or your employer, they can go to the scheme and they will get a fair resolution. Secondly, anti-money laundering, which is part of everything that involves finance, especially in a state agency. We need to know where the money's come from. Should we be receiving rental payments, deposits, commissions? We need to have identity checks on all people that we're dealing with. So whether it's a buyer, a seller, a landlord, a tenant, we need to be compliant. You've also got responsibility to employers and the customer in relation to public liability and employer liability insurances. Client money protection, which is fairly new, this has become a legal requirement as well. This is an insurance that you have to have, and this quite simply protects your client's money. Should you be collecting money, paying it into an account, the legal requirement is to have that in place. You as an individual, if you're from another country, or even if you're based in the UK, you need to be compliant with your country of residence tax requirements. So for example, if you're coming over from the US or from another country outside of the EU, for example, you will need to know what your liability is in relation to monies that you earn. And finally, data protection, otherwise known in the UK as GDPR, this is protecting your client's identity and stopping you from using their information without their permission. I hope that helps.